Hello everyone. So today I want to share um, some secrets of Kabbalah. Um, I'm, however, I want to make a disclaimer. I'm not a Kabbalist, uh, but throughout the many years of studying Torah, you come with an understanding of certain foundations. Um, and uh, basically, there are, although there are different levels of Kabbalah, uh, there are some, some that we can only learn with a teacher and there's some basic, basic foundation you can learn from books um, uh, or, for, or from, from by yourself. You can uh, discover them as, as, as you learn Torah. So I want to share just basic, basic foundations. But although they are basic, basic foundations, most people actually don't know about it. Um, and uh, they are really so essential because it helps you understand a lot, a lot of things. Um, about the world, how the world works. So, um, I hope you're excited because uh, it's, I think, one, when one understands that, then we understand a whole different uh, way of how to look at the world, Judaism, um, and everything. So, um, we, we are basically going to try to be focused on the main uh, part of Kabbalah, like most books of Kabbalah this speaks about it, and that's the uh, what we call the tree of life, the spheros, the ten spheros. Um, uh, the ten spheros, what are the ten spheros? So, um, we're gonna start from the very beginning and try little by little to understand step by step what, what the spheros are and how it works. So, um, we have to basically look at the world as, you know, from the very beginning. At the beginning, there was absolutely nothing, nothing, just God. And we're talking, we're not talking about a physical universe. There was no spiritual universe either. God is not spiritual. God is something that nobody knows who he is and what it is. The only thing we know is the information he gives us and the hints and metaphors um, that he gives us by looking at this world, by learning the Torah, we get to know uh, a little bit of, uh, of who he is, but barely, but more what he wants. That's the only thing we know is what he wants. Um, and, um, and the study of the spheros is going to help us understand a little bit what it is that he wants and uh, how the system of the world works. Basically, in short, the spheros teach you everything about everything. So, how do we understand that? At the beginning, there was nothing, just God, and He need, decided to create the universe, um, and that's why we have a whole story of Genesis. And He created the world um, in ten steps, right? So, we just had the portion of, of Genesis of Bereshis. Uh, first of first uh, section of the the Torah, the Old Testament, and it says right there at the beginning, Bereshit by Elohim in, in in the beginning of God's creating the the world, and uh, then it says by He or right that God wanted light and there was light and different statements. How many statements did He do in total? So the rabbis. So us that if we count them, we come with ten statements. Bereshit being the first one of the ten. Actually, there's two opinions. But at the end, we all agree there are ten statements. And those ten statements, the Asar Mamorot, are um, basically the birth or the creation of the ten powers or energies with which the world was created. And that's what we refer when we refer to spheros. Meaning, let's give you, let me give you an example. So here's another picture of the ten spheros. So here, the first one, we have to imagine God was above that. Okay, God was beyond, was the first, the beginning, and God decided to create the world. So he started with number one, Big Bang, Big Bet, the, the first letter of Bereshit. Bereshit starts, and little by little, he creates. Uh, a system of from going from spirituality 
to a more 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 physical world until we reach the 10th step which correspond to um, the world as we know it today uh, which is Malchus so the 10 steps can have many different names but the basic names that the Kabbalah gives are Keser, Chochma, Bina, Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzar, Hod, Yesod and Malchus uh, we'll explain to them in English in the future but right now um, we just want to get the basis this one is not the real sphere it's the hidden sphere it's that is something that only comes out um, from the combination of two and when it becomes something becomes integrated we'll speak about it later so we have those 10 spheres and um, basically everything in the world is a combination of these forces so the best way to look at it is let's say you had the you had the big bang and we have all the energies that came out from the big bang um, if you if we look at an atomic structure right you have the atoms and electrons and photons and basically every every sphere you have to look at it as like an atom so to speak a different energy um, or a different transmitter of light so at the beginning God made this system so we are here and God is here and our goal is to climb up the ladder and reach God again or to fix the system in order that God will come down to earth which is really what most people hold like God doesn't want us to go up to him he wants us to bring him to us or to meet in the middle so to speak so so our whole Judaism the whole world works based on this system now um, let me show you something else so from these these ten spheres are connected uh, different lines right uh, because we're speaking of the structure of the world um, imagine that you want to create um, God create water so water is H2O right two two times hydrogen and one time oxygen then with the combination of those two forces then we have water so you have to look at these as the different uh, elements or powers that exist in the world everything is made of those the combination of those ten what connects those ten letters when we pray we say bless is he who spoke and the world came into being what does that mean that means that God used letters to connect those um, those powers. So let's say I will say Maim, which means water. So we have Mem and Yud. So Mem connect, correspond to connect Netzar and Hod and Tiferes. Those two, those three atoms or those three powers. When I say the word Maim, the vibration of the sound, the power of the sound vibrates and it creates water I mean we are not able to create water per se so this only God can do but we can activate those energies through our speech this is why God um, made us gave us the power of speech which makes us different than any animal is that we can create sounds um, through with with emotions and intentions and the sound with emotional intentions creates a certain reality and that comes into the world becomes revealed in the world we don't always see it sometimes it's spiritual but sometimes we're able to see it so like um, the consequence of our prayers and let's understand that this is why our prayers work how many combinations do we have 22 because there are 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet actually the opposite the only reason there are 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet is because <coughs> we have those 22 connection that connects all the energies in the world. So everything you see in the world, a tree, an apple, uh, water, the heavens, earth, uh, animals, you, everything is a combination of 
these um, these powers uh, put together the whole world runs with those 10 energies everything that happens history so let me give you a few examples so you understand a little bit better what I mean um, so for example um, um, it says how many tests every human being has a human being has 10 tests what are the 10 tests so we know um, who has who 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 had the first 10 tests it was Avram Avram had 10 tests why did he have 10 tests because this, he needed to fix those 10 energies that exist in him through different life situations and by working on those 10 uh, things he will be able to perfect himself and have be able to connect to God I'm looking for the picture of the 10 energies uh, connected to men and I had it at the beginning and it looked like it flew away it's gonna, I'm gonna find it one second Too many pictures. So, oh, it was at the beginning. Okay, so this is man, also with those ten powers. Okay, three, three of the powers correspond to the head. Seven correspond to the body. So, Avram, in order to perfect himself, had to fix those ten powers. Okay. Now, those, though that's the first thing. So every human being is supposed to work on fixing those ten powers. Um, now there are uh, intellectual powers, emotional powers, and physical um, powers. Um, and um, what well, there's also spiritual powers above the intellect, but those are basically uh, the different levels of powers. Uh, the reason, did you ask yourself why you have Ten Commandments? The reason why Ten Commandments is because we have those ten, um, ten, co ten powers and every commandment teaches us on how to connect and fix this power um, in the world. Uh, same thing, um, uh, why do we have um, ten fingers or ten toes? Why don't we have nine or eight? Or so the reason is because our fingers are connected to the ten spheres. And the whole idea is we do everything with our hands is that we have the ability through our... The, the, the powers in our hands, so to speak, right? Literally. That by doing an action, I have the ability to fix those ten spheres. And we use our hands mostly for do every action. So it's a reminder of that. Uh, obviously, everything that I'm saying is like a tip like a, uh, only the tip of the iceberg the tip of the tip of the iceberg it's 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 just there's so many things hidden behind it um, I'm just giving you like just a taste on the surface of what we can grasp at the beginning without knowing too much um, also if you learn in science science discovered that uh, now we live uh, in 10 dimensions that there are exactly 10 dimensions that exist and so go look check online the 10 dimensions that science speaks about is very interesting and give you a bit of taste um, of the fact that there are 10 powers um, that's this why as a Jew when we pray men need 10 um, 10 10 people in order to pray to create congregation to pray we need 10 people those 10 people uh, are necessary in order to be able to pray so unless we um, unless we are together we're not able to have our powers our the part our prayer go all the way up um, we can pray as an individual but when we're 10 it says the divine presence is able to come down and we're able to connect up that's that's to teach us that each one of us has powers and when we combine them together something unique happens and we can connect to the spiritual world uh, we can bring down God here um, that's about this they also it speaks about ten songs 
that we're gonna sing uh, all together and the tenth song will be when Moshia come, ten red cows, um, um, ten, ten sounds, uh, ten different sounds or, or music notes uh, and um, yeah, so the all different types of ten. There, there are a lot of. There were ten miracles in the temples, um, ten main items in the Mishk Mishkan, in the holy sanctuary in the desert. Um, we have uh, a lot, a lot of things. <laughs> ten nations that needs to be um, uh, fought in order to acquire the land of Israel. A lot of ten. So all the reason we have all those ten is to each, each time a reminder that everything works through those ten. Okay. So now that we understand that, um, we can we can start saying asking. Okay, why uh, or not how why, but how do we work on those ten things? So there are many ways to work at it. There are different books that teach you how to do it. One is the book The Palm Tree of Dvorah. It speaks about the ten spheros and tells you how to fix each one of them. Each one of the spheres corresponds to a character trait. Um, um, and uh, there's also another book, my favorite, which is called The Messiah Sesharim, The Path of the Just, that connects, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you it's connected to that, but it tells you 10 steps um, <coughs> and helps you work on that. Um, you're gonna find those 10 steps also in the, the 10 days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, there's 10 days, they correspond to those 10 powers, and the whole reason is to fix those 10 different levels, in order that we purify ourselves completely. Okay, now we can answer a lot of things also. We'll ask you why there are seven main colors in the rainbow. Well, basically, we have to understand that those 10 spheres are split into two. This filter spin to two. Days. Oh, actually, it's better to use the one the picture with the human person. There's three top spheros and seven lower spheros. Okay, the three correspond to the head. The seven correspond to the body. Um, so the three that correspond to the head, this is so to speak the responsibilities. Uh, that the Jew have. The Jew has to be a leader through the Torah, through the learning, through the understanding. He's supposed to be the head of the nations, not to be, um, uh, to control them, but to direct them and advise them. Like you think of a thought and say that would be good to do, so the body follows and do what's good for him. Um, and the, the body has the seven. That's why um, there's the famous laws of Noah that started from Adam Arishon until uh, until Abraham, or until today really. The seven laws of Noah, the Noah has laws that any non-Jew can do, and he does those seven laws, he, um, he works on those seven things, he fixes those seven spheros um, which, he, which makes the world be in order. Um, now, this is why the Jews have ten commandments and the, and the non-Jews have seven commandments. The ten commandments affects the whole thing, the non-Jew affects only the bottom part. Now, it's not that one is better, is the heart better than the head? No. Everything is necessary, every part is important, however, there are priorities and responsibilities, so to speak. So non-Jew non is responsible mostly for the physical world. The non-Jew, a Jew is responsible for the spiritual world uh, to be connected to the physical world. So the head and the body have to work together, the soul and the body. And so too, Jews and non-Jews have to technically work together. However, um, uh, Jews have to be spiritual and learn enough to do, and, and, and be role models. And the non-Jews have to be open to accept the teachings and to be guided. And then he can work together like body and soul. Uh, in Kabbalah, they call it a marriage. Jews and non-Jews have to be married like a husband and wife. It's a male-female. The whole idea is to work together and in harmony. 
and, and, and fix the world. Um, so now we so we didn't explain what there are ten commandments and for Jews and seven commandments by non Jews. Now another uh, thing of seven so seven correspond more to the physical world and the three to the head to the spiritual world. So um, if you look in this in physical world, did you ever ask yourself why there are seven days of the week? So the reason there are seven days is because there are seven lower spheres, seven steps to the week, and once it's finished, we fix it. Originally, there were supposed to be ten days, if because we have go go to a perfect world of ten steps from us to God. Always like to um, you know say as a, as a as a joke, but I think there's some truth to it that the kids they play. They turn the stones on the on the floor and they jump with the leg, tack, tack, one, two, one, two, and go to the other side and then come back. So this game, I believe, is a, is a hint to our game with Ash God, where we try to come closer step by step uh, with our feet one, two, one step at a time. So um, that's what we want to achieve. Now, so that's why there are seven notes so seven days of the week, and um, that's why there are seven main planets in our solar system. To also teach us about that, uh, the, the 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 seven uh, planets correspond to the seven days, and that's why Sunday is for the sun, Monday is for the moon. Each one of the days correspond to a day, and actually it affects all of creation, the way the orbit is. We know the moon affects the water level, and the sun the heat level. So, um, all, all this is connected to the ten spheres. <clears throat> Why do we have seven notes of music? Because, again, in this world, um, there are seven levels of, uh, uh, of sound, correspond to the seven spheres. Why? The, so we say what the, the, the light, so we mentioned as before, has seven colors. Or re, the light, when it's white, it's white. So the white corresponds to the three top spheres. The three top spheres um, from the head, right, correspond to pure light to spirituality. Once, once the light goes through a prism, in a way, when the light comes, the spirituality comes to this world, it goes from one light, white light, to seven different colors, and that's the seven colors of the seven spheres. So, um, uh, this, this one we experience when we do light through a prism, we experience that. Um, and so, it is one of the reasons why we have the menorah, the famous menorah with seven branches, which correspond to the seven different lights, the seven different spheres, and for and this item is used with light, with candles, right? So we have to understand that all this is all hinted uh, in, in in this. You can find that in everything. Um, what 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 else do we have that is seven? Um, I think that those are already just a, a few examples that give us already a good idea. There's more, obviously, but. Let's let's try to now understand uh, what every sphera is. So um, we have the top sphera crown is is like uh, like the skull correspond to the skull. Um, I explain in human terms according to the body is the best way to understand because it says the more you understand your body, the more you understand the whole universe, and this is one of the reasons because. This the system of spheres teach you about your body and the whole world. So you have the crown, which is the skull, or the the, the thought, very high level of thought. Then you have chokhmah, which is wisdom, information. And then you have uh, bina, which is understanding. Um, when you take the information and you process it, then this chesed, which is love. Um, or expansion, then there's Vura, which is strength or limitations, then you have Tiferes, which is beauty or harmony, then there is Netzach, which is um, the victory or um, consistency, eternity, and then there's Hod, which represents 
uh, the power of um, how you say splendor, beauty, um, and light. And then there's Yesod, which is the which means translated as foundation, uh, the power to transfer something, purity, um, transparency, and then and, and uh, connection. And number ten is Malchus, which is royalty or kingdom, kingship. So we want to go from here to here. We want to connect the crown to the kingdom, so that everything is working in harmony. Every laws of nature, every thing that you see with your naked eyes, everything that you can feel, absolutely everything that is out there only exists because of the ten spheros. The ten spheros is the system, is the mechanics, the quantum physics, the matrix that God designed for the world to be able to function the way it is. So there's a system that works by itself. Imagine I have those, uh, I use like a little puppet, right? And then I turn it and it starts moving. <laughs> so there's a system. So God, at the beginning of creation, created a system of 10 um, combinations, so to speak, and 22 letters. And that's why it's the holy language and, and the original language. Every language comes from there. So when God turned this at the beginning of creation, He let it happen. But God said, within that system, I can intervene anytime I want. Um, so there's the laws of nature that is correspond to the ten spheres. But God said, I can intervene whenever I want to change the system. And He gave certain human beings the power to also affect the system or change the system. It is one of the reasons some people will learn Kabbalah to understand how the system works and how to go about uh, beyond it and 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 and, and uh, bypass it. Now we're only allowed to do it for the sake of God, for the God's will, not for selfish personal use. Um, but only very few people can do that. Um, and and um, uh, and the Torah. So who can do that? People who learn to be very holy. Um, we call it Sadikim in Judaism, but a Jew is here and able to use the system and in rare occasion to transcend the system. Now that's one of the famous saying that was said about Abraham and the Jews that uh, God said, I, I see in the stars. Now let me, wait, well, let me finish actually. Uh, uh, I see in the stars that I'm not going to have children, and then Sarah cannot have children because he looked at the system. And the stars is part of the spheros. Imagine that all those spheros, right? It's no reason that, they, no, no coincidence that they are around also, is connected to the stars of the sky. Every star is connected to that system. They are also sphere, and, and that's why the zodiac signs is also connected to that. Um, and um, all the zodiac is connected to the system of the ten spheres, and and they use those powers to the the way they they explain it is that the stars who send the energy are the intermediaries between the spheres and us. So in a way, the stars send influence that uh, eventually science one day will discover. We know s s a bit of it, like I described before, with the energy of the sun. Uh, the, the world is affected by that, but the the the, the stars sends energy that comes from the spheres and into the physical world. So, um, the, the 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 we our whole life, the horoscope has some truth to it. However, God told Abraham, "I will take you above the power of the of the of the system, the sky, so that your free choice will uh, be able to transcend the script." Or the laws of nature that uh, are meant to happen, meaning you have a say in the system. You can uh, direct the force of nature and direct the script. But only people who do it, who want to do it, to make the bring the world to perfection and to be close to God, um, like the Jews, uh, are, are able to do it. But this is one of the reasons people will decide to convert. They will decide to convert because 
I want to uh, connect to a higher system that has more influence in the world and this way I can perfect the world and bring the world to perfection by connecting to God. That's the mission of the Jews. The mission of the Jews is to connect to those ten spheres and fix them so that God can be brought down uh, the, the, the whole, the whole, all the powers can be united in one. Obviously, God could have created a system with in one, just one power, but then everything would be one. There would be no free choice, there would be free, perfect and finished. God made the, the world defective on purpose so that we can create that unity. God wanted us to choose to be one with Him. If we don't choose to be one with Him, then there's a king and a slave and we have no choice. God wanted us to have our own free choice and decide, I want you, God. Every moment you want, you can say, I don't want you, God. That's your free choice. So as Jews, we, as a nation, we decide to, I want you, we want you, God, and we want you to be, to be your representative and pass on the message to the rest of humanity. So, now, uh, how do I work really on those character traits, on those ten powers? Um, one way is to learn how to think and this is by learning Torah and which fixes mostly those three powers on the top the way to, 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 to have a thought and to structure a thought and to think and to connect to God and to information and connect together that's the top and, but the, the, the seven lower spheres correspond more to the emotional and physical uh, animalistic need and they are the hardest to work on um, and those are the ones that we have been working on for generation and generation um, uh, beside our own learning of Torah. So <clears throat> how do we do that? Um, we had the, 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 the are, uh, well we just had the festival of Sukkos. Festival of Sukkos um, has seven days, just like Passover is seven days, and we know now seven days because it's seven lower spheres. Uh, and basically, um, we have seven days with seven shepherds, the seven Ushpizin that we call, um, that are the seven fathers of Israel. So we are Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moses, Moshe, uh, Aaron, y um, Yosef, and David Amelech. Those seven men are the people who uh, perfected themselves um, in that specific power and because they lived a life that represented that power and perfected that power, uh, we learn from them how to continue fixing that power. Meaning that Although those men have fixed some, right? We say we have to fix those seven, so sorry, those ten powers in order to connect to God. So the moment we connect, fix those seven, we can connect to the three very quickly. And the moment the, the body is relaxed and happy and ready to, to accept what the thoughts are, what the mind wants, what the, 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 the yeah. The, thought, the, the soul wants, then, then it'll be easy to be united. So the, more, the, the hardest work is on the body. If my mind says, you're tired, you, wanna, you, you should go, no. If the mind says, um, you should go on a diet, but the body says, I don't care, I'm hungry, I feel like eating uh, chocolate cake, and I don't care about cholesterol, all that, then the body is just rejecting the thoughts. So <clears throat> the body here is the main work and the hardest work. And um, that's what we focus on. That's why we have the seven shepherds. So let's say Avram fixed most of Chesed. He fixed 80% of the Chesed in the world. Now there's still 20% of the power of Chesed to be fixed. <coughs> so we individuals all, and, and the nation as a whole also have to work on fixing our Chesed. So what Chesed, for example? So we know it's connected to love and expansion. We learn from the life of Avram how he did chesed, how he loved people, how he tried to get people to come closer to God, how he helped people uh, expand, become stronger and become themselves, um, uh, and, and, and how to love life and, and to 
to perfect a world uh, in, in with with the emotions of emotion of love and passion. So, so um, each one of those spheros have to be studied, and we learn it from the life of those uh, forefathers. And all of uh, Judaism, all the character, all that are all included in that. Um, so, another idea that I want to connect also is that we have to remember that in, in Kabbalah, those ten spheres are called the tree of life. The same tree of life that we are talking about in the beginning of Bereshis, uh, which is called um, no, which is the Etz Etz right? So Adam had in the middle of the ga gar Garden of Eden two trees: the Etz Adas, Etz Achaim. He chose to eat from the Etz Adas. God wanted him to really to eat from the Etz Achaim. Why was the Etz Achaim? The Etz Achaim was the understanding of the ten spheres. Again, it was not a real fruit. It was not a it was not uh, just a tree that uh, you know, like uh, like we have real trees outside. No, it was, we who, he lived on a spiritual world. The story of Berish is, is not a physical story. It started in a very spiritual world. Imagine words of angels and this um, uh, and, and, and there's this whole uh, world to discover in order to come close to God and. God said, if you eat from that tree, spiritual tree, spiritual fruit, then you're going to understand things. So, in the same way we learn something, you, 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 by reading a book, then you can learn something by eating something. You understand what it is. So, <clears throat> we chose, when I say we, because all of humanity is part of Adam, so Adam chose to eat from the Etz Adas because he wanted to understand and know what good and evil really means, and uh, he thought that would be the best way to understand God and come close to God. Obviously, he was mistaken, and the rabbis of the Kabbalah explained that he should have eaten from the Etzachaim. What's the Etzachaim? Is the is the, is the ten spheres. He will understand the wisdom of the Kabbalah of the whole system, and by understanding that, he will have been able to live forever still and be close to God and fix the whole system. So now that we fail to do that, we have to fix our knowledge of good and evil. We have to be clear what good and what is evil because everything is mixed up. And uh, we have to um, uh, eat from the Etzachayim uh, in order to live forever, so to speak, in order to understand uh, and get the world and get Olam and that's the learning of Kabbalah. That's the, all this is explained by Rabbi uh, Chaim Vital Zasal in the Etz Um in his introduction. So another thing that I want to explain uh, connected to that is that the ten spheres are corresponding to the name of God. That famous name of God that everybody speaks about, Yud and He and Vav and He, Right, that we say Adonai, we don't pronounce the real name, we say Adonai, uh, our God, our Master, our, our, right, our Master, and because we cannot pronounce the true name until it is revealed completely, because it would be completely disrespectful. So we say the, the name of the, from a physical perspective, from a lower perspective, from a human perspective. So, the 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 ten spheres so the the ten spheres correspond really are hidden in the name of God. So the tip of the yud is correspond to Keter, then the yud to Chochma, the He to Bina, the Vav which is six one two three four five six correspond to the six uh, lower spheres, and and He correspond to Malchus, the last one. So when we the, it's the, the, the study of God's names, holy name, is really also the study of the system, of the spheres. They're interconnected, and that's why we, the, the Kabbalists, like very spiritual people, spend a lot of time understanding the names of God. Different names of God activate different spheres. 
uh, but Yud Kevake is the main fundamental, the first, the trunk, so to speak, uh, root of all of the names. Um, so, um, another thing on the spheros is that every 10 spheros correspond had 10 in it, and every 10 of them has also 10. Meaning it's a system that is almost infinite. Uh, the best way to explain it is you have a cell of the body. We know that every cell of the body has contains all the information for all the cells of the body. So, um, uh, this way, uh, w when one works on something, it affects the whole structure. Everything is connected. Um, there's a time of the year where we work on... <coughs> The time of the year where we work on our seven spheres as a nation uh, all together, uh, which is from Pesach till Shavuos, right? From Pesach to Shavuos, we have seven weeks which correspond to the seven spheres, and that's uh, where we work on every day. We count 49 days, seven times seven, and that's present also that same idea that there is uh, Chesed in Chesed, Gvura in Chesed. <coughs> and, all, and, 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 and so it's all in the Siddur, you can read it, and the whole idea is to perfect our character traits, how we are. Um, so, um, now we understand that's all the concept, and, and we didn't speak exactly with the, uh, explain the parts of the body with the ten spheres, so, um, the, the, this is correspond, the Kesar correspond to the skull, um, then the Chokhmah correspond to the right side of the brain, Bina to the left side of the brain, <coughs> Chesed to the right arm, Grua to the left arm, Tiferes to the center, the torso, the belly, then Netzach and Hod correspond to the two uh, legs, um, and Yesod correspond to the sexual organ, and Machus correspond to the feet. So. Which means, that's why in Judaism you have certain laws on w which part of the body to use. Uh, when we do um, Kiddush, we use right, the blessed wine on Friday night, we use the right hand. Or when we give tzedakah, charity, we have to give it with the right hand. Why? Because the right corresponds to chesed. Chesed is love and giving and expanding. So when I do this, this action, I have to connect my emotions and my mind to it, and I use the right arm, which is the power of Chesed. When I do that, the spiritual world, in the spiritual world, you have all those ten spheres also. And therefore, it's like string theory. We are all attached. When I use my Chesed, I give love, I expand, I give, there is a power that goes in the spiritual world that sends the Chesed, it bounces back, it's like a mirror. It bounces back and Chesed comes into the world, more love comes into the world and things of love and expansion and life and giving start happening all of a sudden. Um, we don't see it because we don't see the, the system of the spheros going like that and happening. But it is actually uh, happening like that. So, um, that's the different parts of the body. Um, and what, what the different parts of the body we do, it, you use each time activates that specific uh, sphera. Now, the t let's remember that we have 613 commandments. Why do we have 613 commandments? Because those 613 commandments are connected to the 10 commandments. Um, 6 plus 1 plus 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10. The 613 commandments really are 10 commandments. It's the same thing. It's the 10 commandments are the head chapters, and the 613 are parts of the 10 commandments. And therefore, um, each time we do one of the 613 commandments, we fix one of the 10 commandments. Um, so when we activate one of the 10 spheres. So um, everybody has different things that he messed up and he worked, he, 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 he broke. Based on where he's struggling, he's gonna do more commandments connected to this part of the body, of this part of the body. Someone who was uh, immoral sexually, he's gonna have to do mitzvahs that correspond to yesod. If someone was uh, um, uh, uh, stingy in his previous life or in this life, he's gonna use the 
uh, he's going to use chesed, the power of chesed, uh, in order to be giving and loving. Um, so that's uh, that's a little bit the idea of those ten spheres. Um, try to think if I should give you a bit more on it. Um, oh, I have to I have to mention that. Um, most of the Eastern spirituality, I would say Western too, but Eastern spirituality, especially things like Buddhism or things with meditation and chakras, comes from the from the Kabbalah. Most of the Kabbalah or the spiritual things that you're gonna hear about, everything comes from the from the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah was given originally um, at Mount Sinai, uh, uh, at um, and Adam Arishon. Adam Arishon learned Kabbalah, so to speak. He, it's not that he learned Kabbalah. He, he understood how the world works. And the Tzfiros teaches you, and the Kabbalah teaches you exactly how it works. Um, and Mount Sinai, the Torah was given with the Kabbalistic and explanation with it. So that when we learn Torah, we understand how to fix the world also with the Kabbalistic system. Um, so... So when we learn the difference of so, uh, Christianity, Kabbalah, and Muslim Kabbalah, and Buddhism, all that comes from really Judaism originally. Um, I'm sure I'm sure there are people who disagree with that, but uh, you're gonna see that everything is connected to that originally. So here you have the five main chakras, um, which really correspond because the whole idea in the spheres is to take all the side spheres. Of man, and combine it in the middle. The, we they, they we bring them together, so to speak. So we bring both sides, and in order to have a straight line. So this is what when people meditate, they try to bring all energies in the center, and harmonize all those powers in you. <coughs> so, um. And 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 uh, so it's important to know that that's where it comes from. Uh, and I would like to finish with one thing: um, is that so? There's much more about the spheres, right? But I, 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 we can go for hours, literally. But why now? I just want to finish with the idea that okay, now we understand that it's ten powers, ten spheres. We are, we have those ten powers in us. We're made. We're designed based on how our soul looks. And based on the spheros uh, system, and therefore, in a way, you have to look at yourself as a superhero. Each one of us is a superhero. Each one of us has those powers in us, uh, in him, and we have to use those powers: the power of love, the power of 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 of, uh, of, of giving, the power of uh, uh, fixing, the power to repair, the power to limit the power to think the power to uh, uh, to 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 fight the power to defend the power to connect all those powers uh, all the emotions you have all the desires instincts all those are here for you to use and use in harmony with the rest of the world so each time you use a thought each time you use uh, your speech it's time you use your, you do an action in the physical world. It goes all the way, right? We're here in the physical world. It goes all the way up, and then, and something happens. It gets uh, illuminated, so to speak, and it bounces back based on your action. Obviously, the more you sin, the less you are effective. The less you sin, the more you're effective, because the light can go very quick up and quick down. That's why he said that the tzaddik is answered right away. Because he has like a wireless, the fastest wireless connection, um, and uh, that's um, that's the very helpful, <laughs> to speak. All right. So um, I wanted to show you this picture going to the chakras. Okay. So here we have the ten spheres with the five chakras in the in the middle. So it, it, in Judaism, we have to understand, we used to meditate nine hours a day. The, the rabbis used to meditate nine hours a day, and we connected to all our different powers. So, um, but, but that's, that's, again, that, that's what I wanted to share with you.
<clears throat> because when you understand that this is where everything comes from, the whole system, when you look at the world, you look at the world as a combination of all those uh, colors, sound, um, atoms, those ten uh, spheres. Uh, the whole study of Torah uh, is in order to reach a level where I can understand the whole system and, and use and harmonize and fix the whole system. Um, and uh, yeah, so I encourage everyone to look more into it, to learn the Torah um, and understand uh, whenever you hear the number 10 or number 7 or 3 and 7, you understand it's always a reference to 10 spheres, to 10 different powers and an ability, a poten uh, an opportunity to fix the world and to understand the world that God's run. Um, yeah, I think that's it for this time and we will sure continue hopefully another time with more incredible um, discovery about, about uh, the Torah, Judaism and the world. Have an awesome day.